all right today I'm gonna do this video uh, another video on the uh, Maverick 250 that I just picked up from a local I recently did one uh, what a week ago a few days ago on uh, this was a multi-band amplifier and it had all the ham bands in them and the ham bands basically don't work in these anyway and this has been down converted or modded or whatever you want to talk call it to a single band or mono band amplifier um, and the guy that uh, I got this from a local friend of mine he also gave a um, original sales pamphlet or manual to it and here's the uh, sales pamphlet and there are many different versions of this amp and this is a old uh, originally it was a old um, multi-band um, with the band switch there 10 through 40 meters but again that's been modded and it had a big load cap in it but the load cap in it was bad so I replaced it with the um, smaller um, cap because you don't need a lot of capacitance for the um, 10 meter band anyway you need all that extra stuff and extra coils for the multi-band but anyway let's go back to this manual here and uh, on this page it's got the uh, Hawk um, 25 watts out 4 watts in I think all of these uh, DNA or basic CB amps are made for 4 watts or less um, over here we got the Hornet 1 to 4 watts in, 50 watts out I'm not too familiar with those two um, and it doesn't mention the tubes. The Raider I'm very familiar with here this is again all of these are the older versions 100 watts out I know the Raider used four smaller of tubes 1 to 4 watts in and then we have the Maverick 250 or one version and this was the um, single band version you know from the factory and you got the output tune and load and then you got a uh, driver tune there and internally it had a driver load and it was actually this cap here let's turn it around a little bit this same um, Arco trimmer cap but it was mounted internally it just you know there wasn't a hole on the front it's all uh, for the driver load so that's the uh, mono band and basically other than you know mounting that cap that is what I converted this one to but we'll get back to that in a minute and over here is another one I don't think that's multi-band um, with driver tune, driver load, and another tune. I think that second tune is the input tune on this one, and it's a dual power. And I'm not going to get into the schematics, but this one also is a dual power. But on the one that matches the schematics and probably this one, most of them used a relay for the dual power to turn on the high or low power. And it used a second relay to turn on the B plus, the um, high voltage. And the third relay was the antenna relay. So um, most of these uh, DNAs, the bigger ones, the Maverick and the Phantom, you'll see multiple relays in them. And the relays, you know, over 40, 50, 60 years, uh, they get, you know, pitted and arced and uh, bad contacts and go bad. So one of the main problems besides recapping them is the uh, multiple relays in them. But this one, it does not have a um, high, low power relay in it. It's just got the antenna relay here. And it's got this relay here that turns on the B plus, the high voltage to the tube. So the B plus is only on the tubes. They're only, you know, getting power when it's keyed down, you know, by that relay. 
And some Palomars did not have that. And then some of the later, like 300 A's, they added that relay. Because what they would find is you got a, you know, a gassy tube or something happened. Even in standby, you got that voltage on the tube. You know, that um, amp could go up and smoke, you know, even in standby. But with that relay taking the um, power off the... Um, tubes and only when it's keyed down like you could leave it in standby all day long and you know nothing would happen to it but on this amp with the high low power they did it through the um, power switch which I don't know if I like that because you got the high voltage those red wires on the back of that switch that's what determines the high power or low power they use it's a center tap transformer and for high power on the driver tubes they put the full high voltage on them and for low power on the driver tubes only they they put the um, um, half power coming out the power supply on the uh, driver's tubes the output finals always have full power but uh, I guess the problem with that not using a relay is you got high voltage going up to the switch I don't like that but I don't like having multiple relays either so um, some other amps, um, they keep the voltage on the tubes, the high voltage on the tubes, but they uh, switch in and out the ground or the cathode, which I think is a better way to do it. But some, a lot of these early amps, they switched out the um, high voltage or left it on there all the time. But um, back to this, you got the Maverick 250 dual power here. And even though this one is a dual power, as you can see, it's different with the um, driver tune load and a, and a second tune, which I think is the um, input tune. And on this one here, that's the input tune in the back there, another one of those small trimmer caps. And that coil there and underneath of it is the other side of that trimmer cap. Um, that's the input tune. So on this dual power, they move the input tune from the uh, back to the front. Then you got a couple versions of Phantom. A Phantom early single stage. If you notice, you got the output tune and then just driver tune. It also had the uh, driver load and an input tune, but they were on the back and internal. And then a Phantom dual power here in this um, pamphlet. And you notice the uh, tune and loads, they moved them to the front with this dual power. And then an early uh, triple stage, triple um, um, power basically. You know, same layout. It's just now it's triple um, power. And with this one, I think uh, they switched to high voltage again, not only on the driver tubes. But on the final tube, so, you know, high power was high voltage on both. And then like a medium was, you know, uh, uh, lower power on the drivers. And then a low side was lower power on the, both the finals and the drivers with the triple stage. Um, on high power, they all do the same output. You know, it don't matter how many um, power levels or stages they put in there. On high power, it's running off the high voltage and they all have the same output. And before I turn this thing on, let's go in here one more time. We recapped it there. And we also took out the ham bands. That's the driver tune and load there. Um, where that load cap I modded because, again, the, bad, the air cap was a big one and for the ham bands. And it was bad. So I just put in a trimmer that matches the... Um, single band ones and I said all the time you only need about four or five turns usually four turns on a nice size coil for 10, 10 meters and so we took the um, hand band coil and we just uh, cut it off at four coils one of these was the um, driver tank circuit and one of them was the final tank circuit and it's the same thing here was the um, band switch you know to go from 10 meter 15 meter 20 meter etc and it was tapped at different points on these coils you can see you know a tap there a tap there and the end one and it switched the different taps on the coil and that look at that old ugly bands 40 50 year old band switch these go bad 
one of the weak points of any amplifier is you know hard to make a well they can make a good heavy duty switch but it'd be very expensive so you know who's going to put a hundred hundred fifty dollar switch in a three hundred dollar amp so band switch is a problem so this one's been mono banded no band switch but again you get the ugly holes here and i'm not good at making them look pretty i'm more better at fixing them and then over here you got your tune and load and your five turns or so again here of the coil that's all you need four or five turns and that's the uh, tune cap and that's the uh, load cap and for the driver it had one of these two for the load but that's what went bad and I replaced it with the trimmer because um, not necessary to have all that capacitance for 10 meters only you need it for the other bands and that's what it looked like four small tubes driving um, four to six L6 tubes also by the way I had a heck of a problem figuring out uh, why this thing didn't want to key up it was real slow warming up with the keying circuit and it didn't want to key up and you know we were testing relays and voltage to it and you know it runs off the um, center tap of the um, high voltage and it had the volts to it but you know it, it just wouldn't work right for the longest and if I got it to key it would drop out and I you know change some capacitors and I'm like what's wrong with this thing and then I finally put in a new tube and it worked a little bit better but it wouldn't work right you know a 12 AQ5 which is in the manual and in the schematics and I know on Thanos they always use 12 volt filament um, tubes and they put two in series, um, two six volt uh, filament tubes in series. Just how they can run, you know, 12 volt filaments coming out the transformer. But you learn something new every day. This Maverick 250 found out after, you know, hours of aggravation, it runs, it has a six volt uh, center tap for the filament. And of course, it ran six volts to that. Um, relay key in tube and instead of being a 12 aq5 which the schematics say it's supposed to be with the uh, manual say it's supposed to be and everything else i said and what was in it was a 12 aq5 you know following the schematics and all that and even my replacement i put in there was a 12 aq5 it actually needed a 6 aq5 so the filaments wasn't lighting up the way it was supposed to and that's why my relays wasn't working in this thing boy that was a gotcha so um, I guess that's something to be aware of if you're not getting the key and getting it to key down and you know one of these DNA uh, check your filament voltage to the tube and make sure your um, tube matches the filament voltage in it so anyway I think I went through about everything I wanted to go through with this thing and we're gonna turn around and let it warm up a bit one more thing um, the meters on these DNA amplifiers are milliamp meters or amp meters and you know if you uh, ham a lot of them know you can tune an amp by uh, current dip dipping the current and you can on these these are not really output meters if you're trying to tune these for output you're gonna be all messed up you are supposed to tune for a dip in the current if you're not using a watt meter but of course being a CB -er, and on AM I like using a watt meter so hopefully it's still tuned up I'm on my little mud duck uh, Midland radio there I actually put it on standby we go to the 20 watt scale and take it off peak yeah it can two and a half what's on about five um, and they actually does closer to four but we got so much stuff in line including this um, Maverick that um, is dropping my watts down you know we got a switch box in line that um, watt meter there digital one is on the input side we got that preamp in line and we got the amplifier in line and then we got the output watt meter in line so by the time it goes through all those um, items it drops my watts audio if we took all that out and hooked the amp up directly and you know to the watt meter and out we would get um it would hit it harder and we get a little more out of it but 
Um, it is what it is. So we ought to be warm. So we're going to go to the um, let's go to the 200 watt scale and put it on the low side. Low power there. So we're dead key in 60 watts and standing still on average. Let's see what it does on peak there on the low side. Audio. Audio. And about 120 peak. And let's go to the um, high side. And let's go to the 2000 watt scale. So it's dead, dead key in just under 200. Whistling to about 250. Audio. Talking is barely moving up. And last we gonna put it on Pete. Audio. Audio. Yeah, at least we got some swing on peak, right? Audio. Audio. And again, this um, amp would do better if I took all that stuff out of line and drove it with a better radio and all that. But um, basically, that's what it's supposed to do. You know, a couple hundred average, um, 350, probably hit 400 if I took some junk out of line and, you know, tuned it up a little bit. But that's what it does. And one meter... For the high side on these two meters and then that's the low side and then that's the other meter um you know running and i'm gonna turn it off because i just thought of one more thing i wanted to show is you see those resistors there those are very low ohm resistors and that go across that a current meter or amp meter and those basically ground the tubes. So if those resistors go bad or open or whatever, you're not going to get any power out the tubes. So just keep that in mind that another gotcha is if you're not getting power out this thing, check your resistance of these um, play current meter um, dropping resistors. Because that's what um, it goes through those resistors to put a ground on the cathode. And if those resistors aren't right, you ain't going to get no output because you ain't getting no ground. All right. That's going to be it for this um, Maverick 250. Bye.